Now, as we all know, there are one or two of these systems around different makes, but the thing that I really like about this one from Ambercus is that they are a British company, they understand British plumbing, and they've actually designed this to work with our systems. So you're not running around to the merchants looking for a non-existent adapter to the Continental systems. Everything you need to do the job is in this kit. So that includes having a straight and an angled waist outfit. You won't need the two of them, obviously, but whichever one you want is there. Again, saving you running down to the merchants every five minutes. So as I put this together, you'll see a lot of unique features of this system that I think makes it the best one out there. So I know quite a number of plumbers who see an instruction booklet and then throw it away. That's crazy because there's quite a lot of good information in here. And honestly, there's some unique features that you won't want to miss on this system. I'm going to show you them in a video, but the instruction booklet is there to refer to. Now, the basis of all these wall hung systems is that you're going to create a pre-wall off the existing bathroom wall, and that's going to be used for basically for your soil pipe. Now, there was a time when we used to put the loo in and then run the soil pipe along the side and box that in, and it just looks awful. I mean, things have really moved on. This is neat, it's all hidden. So what we're basing it on is 225 millimeters in this case off the wall to the front of the, the frame and that's going to give us ample room for that soil pipe behind and the thing about the amicus package system if you like is that they even give you two sizes of bolts so that you can cope with whatever the installation is so this is one of the rare occasions when you don't worry about having a few bits left over in the kit because they're giving you things you won't need just because they're giving you all those variations. Now, I know there are people out there who are gonna be saying, hang on a minute, you mean I'm paying for bits I don't use? That's a bit of a waste. But actually, when you add it up, if you look at the cost of some other frames and then you go buying all the extra bits that you need to complete the installation, it can add up to a lot. This is a competitively priced frame. Even with all these extra bits in it, it really works out to be cost effective. Now, one of the things people worry about is you've got considerable weight onto a frame. I mean, people aren't getting any lighter for a start. So you need to make sure it's really secure. You've got about 65% of the weight going down into the floor. So there's some secure fixings in a floor plate. And then that means you've got 35% that's coming back from the wall. Now, in this case, we're fitting to a stud wall. So what I want to do is use a bit of Unistrut to spread the load across the wall and actually we pick up the basin frame with it as well. Now the thing about the Unistrut is that the Abacus system is made to fit, they've actually got the fixings that will fit directly into the Unistrut so you're not having to build it up and add odd brackets. The first thing we need to do is to fix these plates down onto the floor and they do supply the fixings to do that but I know there's a lot of plumbers who are a bit nervous about going directly down onto chipboard floors. I mean, this is moisture resistant and it's fine, but if you are worried about it, if you think the floor won't take it, you can put a piece of ply through there as a bit of reinforcing. The important thing is that it comes up, here's the mark, this is one meter from the finished floor level. So it may be that putting that ply through by the time you put your tiles on, it's the right height. But if it's not, you've got some adjustment in the feet. But the important thing is not to start raising that frame up too high because that's going to throw the whole installation out. Keep it at that metre and you'll be fine. Now a really great feature of this frame is that it's got these lovely large feet which means you've got a nice weight distribution there. I've fitted frames where they've got tiny silly little feet and you're trying to get the drill in and make a decent fixing. Honestly, it's really difficult. Well, this one, you can get down behind it and you can make the fixings very easily. And of course, you've got these rubber pads on the bottom, which stop the noise transmission down into the building. So I've got a nice parallel line along the front here at 225, where the front of the wall is going to be. That's centre. So now I can assemble the brackets for the top of the frame to fix that. 
Now these are the wall brackets, they've got ABS to stop that noise transmission and the great thing about this is that you can use them that way if you're going into a unistrut or if you're going into a bit of timber or something like that you can put them on the side or that way means you can get the drill in but I would just say that if you do that and you've got a basin frame coming in very close you may find those two brackets touch each other so in that case you would just turn it around but easy enough there's no bolt cutting to be done they simply go in you've got the two different lengths of bolt to choose from and we've got a nice little clip that goes in there we put the bolt through and we wind it in I'm using the long bolt rather than the short one it's just on the cusp between the two but you can see there's plenty of fixing there and when I'm happy I put that in to lock us in place so just another thing they've really thought about here is that whichever way this bracket goes round, it's still level with the top of the frame. So if you're mounting a shelf, you don't have to worry about putting any extra stud work in. You can just run the shelf from there to there and it's supported. Now I'm gonna just work out where the Unistrut's gonna go in place, fix that on the wall and we're ready to go. And how clever is this? This little clip lock nut that holds it in place simply clips on there and turns around to hold it. Now I can just get that groove to line up with where the Unistrut's gonna go and mark that on the wall. So I'll just show you how this clip fits into the Unistrut. There's a nib on the back of the ABS bracket and that sits in that groove. And to lock it in there, we've got a washer that spins around. It's gotta be the right way around so that when the nut turns, it tightens that washer on. So do it up hand tight, turn it in, spin it round and then tighten it. When you're using a floor mounted pan, the height is predetermined, you can't change it. But with a wall mounted pan, obviously it can change, it can go up or down. And I've had, let's call them discussions with customers over whether the pan has been at the right height or not. Obviously some people are short, some people are tall, they may want it differently. But the important thing is that you establish all this before you fix the top. Work out what your floor build up is gonna be, whether you've got underfloor heating or whatever in there, and obviously the tile. It also helps to have the pan. Now I know that to the center of the bolt here, I'm looking for 320 millimeters off the finished floor level and that's spot on there. So now I know that I can fix the top. If that needed to be altered, it can be altered very easily by these bolts on the side here. You can move it up or down. But the important thing is that you must do that before you fix it finally, because when you've got it all tiled and everything else, it's a very difficult thing to put right. So that's pretty solid. I'm really pleased with that. So now I can carry on with my first fix, get my carcassing finished, and I've got the choice of connectors in the kit. These can cost you quite a bit of money if you have to go out and buy them extra, but I'm gonna use the bent connector on this one. So that's the waste water out. To me, that's always the hardest part because it can only ever go downhill. And we're gonna pop these on here to protect the threads while we're doing the tiling. Those bolts can be adjusted in or out afterwards, by the way, to suit the pan. 
Some people worry about these bolts. They wonder whether this is capable of holding all that weight. Well, it'll hold 400 kilos. And I know people are getting heavier, but they're not that heavy. And then we've got the debris stoppers. They're supplied. They pop in there. And then the tile guide, which goes at the top, clips in there. Now we're ready to do the supply. Now when it comes to fitting the supply, you've got a choice of either coming in at the back or changing it round to come in at the top. And to do that, you simply take the plate off. And it's great because everything can be accessed through the front and that includes servicing even when it's tiled up. You can get to everything. So we've got the supply to the fill valve going round on a flexible hose here and that is isolated there. Now if we want to change this around to go through the top, we just take the connection off here and then take the valve out and put it through the top. And when you put that back, you've got an O-ring to seal it. So it doesn't have to have any paste on it or anything like that. The O-ring will do the job. Just make sure that it's turned up, but there's no need to get a large wrench or pair of grips on it. The O-ring is doing the seal. Just make sure that that's tightened up to there and that's absolutely fine. And then I'm ready to connect up, test the system, and then I can begin boarding and tiling. You will notice here that there's two options for putting these studs through, and this is the 180 mil. Most of them are 180 mil pans these days, but you do get some that are 230. So again, it's important to make sure you've got your sanitary wear before you finally commit and start tiling, because afterwards changing that over is not easy. So why would you want to use a basin frame for a wall hung basin? Well, Quite honestly, it just makes life easier. You can build up stology and people bolt them to the wall, but actually using this frame makes the job a lot better and you get a better job. It's a lot more secure. It's fully adjustable so that you can change the position for the pipes and the waste and so on. The important thing is to get your basin first so you know what basin you're gonna be fitting to this because obviously different sizes, different shapes, different pedestals. They all fit slightly differently. But if you've got your basin on hand, there is nothing complicated about this job. In this case, because we're fitting this next to a WC frame, we're gonna use the same bit of Unistrut to hold it to the wall and that gives it a really secure fixing. But if you didn't wanna put this in a, a wall alongside the WC, if you wanted to put it in a cloakroom or something like that, you didn't have the room, you could move this back as close as 100 millimeters to the wall. So there's plenty of versatility. There's adjustment everywhere on this frame. We can rise and fall on the waste outlet we can adjust the inlet position so that we can accommodate a chrome trap if we want or a pedestal. So there's lots of adjustment. The important thing is get your basin, get your pedestal so that you know where you're going with it and then you'll be fine. Another thing I really like about this, which is different to a lot of the continental ones, is we've got a good inch and a quarter waste outlet there, which is brilliant. We've got an inch and a quarter into here with the bung, which is great. So everything is made to work with the British plumbing system and you really will find it a lot different if you've used those continental ones, you'll find this is a lot easier. So the good thing is that we've got a nice level fixing. We don't need to put in any more stud work or anything at all. That's ready to put the shelf on the top if a shelf is what you want to do. So now I've got that frame securely fixed. There's still actually adjustment here. I know from my finished floor level, which is my elements board plus my tiles plus a bit of adhesive, that I want to achieve 850 to the top of the basin. So I can measure that up and that gives me 795 for the bolts here, the center of the bolts. So all that can be adjusted very easily on the socket set up or down. I know that with this particular basin, I need to adjust out. So that's a 280 adjustment. So I can move that in or out so that I get the correct adjustment centered, of course, on, on there. And I can also 
by doing a trial fit, and I would recommend a trial fit at this stage of just put the basin up, check where your trap is gonna go, where your waste is gonna go, because you've got a rise and fall here, so we can go up or down with that. We can also go in or out or up or down with our pipe connections there. So we're ready to go. Once we start that tiling, the basin's gonna go on there perfectly and everything's gonna line up. So once we've established exactly where all those are gonna go, we can start our boarding and our tiling and we know we haven't gotta make any adjustments afterwards. Okay, so now I've got the frame in position. You can see that everything's adjusted, everything's in place to suit that particular basin. And I've got the bolts in here. The great thing about these bolts is that Unlike somewhere you've got to cut them to length and worry about, with these you can just wind them back and forth so that you've got them at exactly the right length. So that's a really good feature. And then I just pop on a couple of sleeves here just to stop the tile adhesive, clog in the threads and also protect your eyes. And here we've got some debris stoppers to go in the end so that when we do the boarding and tiling, nothing gets in there. But also, if you put a bit of PTFE tape around these, you'll find that you can use them to test the whole system, to test your carcassing up before you start boarding. So we're absolutely sure that everything behind there is leak free and it's ready to go. And you know, I hear a lot of plumbers moaning about the way plumbing's going these days. They talk about plastic fittings and all the rest of it. And I must admit, I think it did go through a bit of a low spot, you know, for maybe 20 years or so. But I think now there's some real design and innovation coming into plumbing that is helping us. And if I was a young plumber starting out today, I'd be really pleased to be using kit like this. So that's the first fix done, and now we're ready for boarding and tiling.